What's up peeps? In this video, I'm testing BB Frosh paint additive for the first time and giving my king size bed frame a desperately needed refresh. This is Copper Cactus DIY. I'm Jen and I paint, flip, faux finish, and restore furniture. And speaking of restorations, before I even get started on this week's video, uh, holy crap, last week was an epic week for my channel and I need to give a huge shout to everyone who subscribed, commented, shared the video, and encouraged me along the way. That ugly duckling piece was intense, but you made it so worth every minute of frustration. Thank you so much for showing up. But this middle-aged bod can only handle so much of that kind of stuff at a time. That's why this week I'm pulling my bed out into the middle of the room and painting it. I got Mr. CC DIY to give me a hand lifting the bed so I could prop it up off the floor. Yep, I'm painting it in place. This thing is way too big to fit in my garage, and frankly, since it's particle board, I don't want to take it apart. Particle board is basically just large sawdust particles and glue pressed together into a shape and then dried. The more you move a screw around in that kind of material, the faster it can break down. Also, getting particle board wet can ruin it by causing expansion, so I'm cleaning with a wrung out microfiber cloth and degreasing dish soap. this kind of cleaning on this piece in a while but it does regularly get wet dusted with a cloth so I wasn't expecting anything too bad for water. I wiped everything down with a clean rag and water to remove any residue. Then I left it to dry. Even though I'm using the additive, I still want to scuff sand this piece. Because it's such a slick surface, I'm going in with a 100 grit paper, using light pressure, and swirling in very tight circles. Spoiler, this won't be nearly enough everywhere. What was enough though? This arm workout that I got. Pro tip? Switch up your hands while you're sanding so you get equally buff on both sides of your body. I used a clean damp rag and wiped down all the sanding dust. The funny thing is that we have so much dust in the air in Phoenix, it just floats right back onto the surface the moment you remove it. Dust is a never-ending battle here in the desert. So now I'm curious. What kind of annoying thing gets everywhere where you live? Maybe sea spray, city smog, pine needles, snow, pollen, something else? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. I spent a few minutes taping off the metal parts. Again, another thing I'm not sure was necessary, for a couple reasons. 
First, I literally flaked and forgot to tape off about half of the areas, which I think you'll see in a minute when I'm painting. And second, well, that has to do with the spoiler I mentioned a minute ago. So hang tight. Because before I could mess anything up, I had to get my paint ready. With BB Frosh, you can mix it into any type of paint to get a chalk style finish. So I'm using up the end of two light tones of latex paint. And latex is a fine choice as a base to create a DIY chalk style paint. In fact, I've done it before using plaster of Paris as an additive. The finish on these dressers, it's held up for almost five years without a single scratch. Well, without a single unintentional scratch, that is. Following the package instructions, I had about 30-ish ounces of paint, which works out to pretty close to a quart, so I would need four to six tablespoons of water. I started with four just to be safe. They say to mix the water into the powder, which I actually did backwards, but I made sure to stir it and flatten out any chunks really well. Dry, this stuff has a very fluffy texture. It's almost like powdered sugar, but it's even lighter. It will fly around, so I recommend a dust mask or a respirator of some sort. I also had my window open in the room, and this might seem overly cautious, but I am all about safety first. Then I poured the BB Frosh mixture into the paint. Also backwards according to the label, but unfortunately my bucket sizes were skewed, so I just made sure to stir constantly as I poured. I also scraped the sides of the container to get all of the mix into my paint. Yep, there it is. There's precisely where I forgot to tape off. But we're not quite there yet. First of all, I liked how the paint flowed. It had a really smooth consistency and it didn't dry out too quickly. Sometimes chalk paint can dry faster and feel really draggy, but this didn't. I also liked the coverage, but since I mixed Valspar and Bear, I don't know which one of them to thank for that. I guess I'll just thank you both. So I kept painting, unbothered by the biggest mistake I made. Have you figured it out yet? If you're a fellow refinisher, you're probably screaming slick stick at your screen right now, am I right? Yeah, I didn't do that, but I did paint two full coats. I did the second one off camera.
After everything dried for a couple of hours, I went back to clean up my mess. If you're using latex and you drip it onto a non-porous surface like this laminate under my project, I suggest leaving those small drips or spills for later. Don't leave them to fully cure out, but after a few hours, you should be able to peel up smaller drips like this without any mess or wet towels. I'm using my Japan scraper. The next morning, I thought things were ready for top coat, so I pulled out my favorite dead flat varnish by Modern Masters. Here's another tip, always stir your top coat. Shaking it can introduce bubbles that show up in your final finish. Plus, you also might not mix in all the materials that settle to the bottom of the can, which can also impact your final finish. So I grabbed a one and a half inch angled purdy and applied the top coat at the taped off areas. It smoothed on really nicely and everything felt great. I rolled the larger spots with a low nap fabric roller. Now I like to pull my tape right away so it doesn't cure in place. But when I pulled back this delicate style tape, I discovered a full-on Monet. Not bad from a distance, but up close, huge mess. This was the exact moment where I realized that I needed to have used a bonding primer. And I even have one on hand. So I intended to add two coats of protection to this piece, but because I'll definitely have to redo this at some point in the future, I'm only doing this one top coat. Not to mention, this thing might not even make it a month because as soon as Matt, aka Mr. CCDIY, laid eyes on it, his first words were, oh, it's pink. So I know he hates it. But for now, I'm calling this project done. Hey, what are you gonna do, right? All I can do for now is clean up my mistakes, starting with this sloppy paint job. I don't hate the color, and once I finish the renovations and decorating in this room, I know the bed will work out great. Just as soon as I strip it, add a bonding primer and repaint it, but you know, details. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to join me on my crazy misadventures in furniture refinishing, restorations, flips, and faux finishing. But that's it for today. Hang in for the beauty shots and some extreme dorkiness at the end. Thanks for being here and watching, everybody. Later, peeps!
four more of those that I don't have. <laughs> That's super. Scrap wood blocks. Thank you. Welcome. Hi. That probably wasn't even on camera. Oh, no. Because, you know. <laughs>